What's up guys? Today's video is going to be on the lighting of the fish tank, the reef tank. Um, I've been getting a lot of questions about how I suspended these reef breeder uh, LED lights. Um, quite simply actually, uh, I went to Home Depot and bought some of this uh, pipe hanger bracket here. Um, this is used to secure pipes to walls and commercial buildings like water lines and conduit and stuff like that. Um, you can see there it's kind of grooved out C-channel and they make these special things that slide right in here and um, that's how you fasten your pipes and stuff to the walls. So I bought this stuff, I bought two pieces of it, I think if I'm remembering correctly it came in a five foot or six foot section, something like that, maybe ten foot section, I don't remember. But um, And then I welded a piece of steel across this just for rigidity across the top and then I welded, welded it to a piece of one inch square tubing at the back. It's all welded to the back. And then I welded another piece of one inch tubing to the back of this here and then I made like a, um, I don't know, I don't even know what the hell to call it, but a post that goes all the way to the floor at the back of the tank and then it's bolted into the back of the, the stand and then this is adjustable there's a nut there and then on the other side there's another nut and then right there you can see a wing nut so if I loosen that I can lower the lights down or I can raise them up just a tad more I can only raise them I can't go much more um, so this is kind of adjustable um, so yeah this might actually be one and a quarter I can't remember the complete details guys this is um, I had scraps in the backyard of steel and <laughs> I was able to have enough to do it. So um, that's the the rail system. It's kind of shaped it like a U and I'll show you here in just a sec. There you go. So there you go. You can see it's kind of shaped like a U. And I did the same thing on this side so you get that. Um, this is what it looks like in the raw form, that C channel stuff. That's what it looks like in raw form. What the hell is going on here? Look what I found. <laughs> I wonder why that came out. Anyways, um, that kind of concerns me. I don't like that. Anyways, um, so that's all welded together. Um, I'll take a light down too to show you guys how I put the lights onto this rail. So this is the same C channel. Let me unplug this. And unplug this. Okay. Ooh, let's not go in the water. How about that? All right. So everything is fully adjustable. I can take this entire rail and I can move it forward. Yeah, like that. And then, you know, just do the other, the other side. So you can see how much I just moved that. So based on where I wanted the light. So let me go to the other side and pull that forward. A little tough. There you go. So now you can see the lights are really far forward as opposed to being directly over the center of the tank. So how is that adjustable? Well I'll show you here in one second. Man, where's my tripod at? That would be great if I had that. Let me see if it's a good spot. Found the tripod, but the bracket's gone. <laughs> Anyways, let me uh, let me take this light off real quick. So I gotta set the camera down. Maybe not. Let me try it. So all I'm gonna do is just continue to pull this rail until it starts coming to the end there, and you can start seeing this uh, little piece that slides in there. And these are specifically made for this C channel. So we'll finish pulling it all the way out. Oh man. That's Okay, so there I got that side off, and I use these same little uh, mounts here um, on the lights. I used two of them. So basically, what I did is I measured the light and uh, width-wise or length-wise, I guess, and found the center of the light, which just so happened to go right in between the two plugs, which worked out perfectly. Um, so I put one here and one here. One here and one here, meaning these right here. I use these. 
and I had to take the light apart, so <laughs> it immediately voided my warranty on the rear, rear lights. But um, so I took the light apart and I pulled out the uh, pulled the front part of the housing off, which the LEDs came off with. And there's two little clips inside that hold the wiring together for the LEDs, and I just undid that. Undid that. So I was left with just the back plate, and all I did was drill a hole big enough for the little bolt. Let's see if we can see the bolt. Little bolt, right? Right. Oh, come on, focus. Right inside there, there's a bolt that came with these hangers, and the bolt just screws right into these things. So I did that on all three lights, and I'm able to, um, I'd have to take this one off here, take this little bracket off, and then I can slide the lights right off. Um, that also makes the lights very adjustable. Um, and I'll show you that here right now. Let me put this back in. It's heavy. Hold on, I gotta put this back on. So got that back on now. Wow, that zoomed like crazy. So that's back on. So now, because I'm using the same rail system and mounts, if I wanted to move this light closer to the center of the tank, I just gotta push it. I think I'm hitting my moving light. Yeah. So, okay, so let's say I wanted to move it towards the Euphelia Garden a little bit more. I just gotta get the light, slide it down. So I'm able to move these lights pretty much everywhere. You see it's swaying a lot. Don't worry. <laughs> the, the bolts are tight. It's just the, uh, the metal material of the back plate is, is uh, it's not really thick. So that's why they wobble. So that's how the lights are fixed onto this rail system. And then I don't know if you guys wanted to know about the wiring, but obviously the lights have two plugs each, which makes for a total of six cords. So what I did is I cut them down really short to about three foot, I think. And it uh, looks like all my, I had zip ties on them. looks like they broke off. But um, all six cords go into this junction box and then they condense down to, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to show you guys, but there's two Romex cords that come out the back end. So the blues are all on one Romex and then the whites are all on the other. And that condenses six cords into two. And based on the size of the conductors and the load that they're carrying, um, I'm okay with that junction box and using the 14.2 plus a ground row next. So um, everything's nice and safe, except for the fact that I got the dangling wires now. I'm gonna have to re-zip tie those. But um, I think that's pretty much it, guys. I mean, that's how my lights are. Um, if you have any other questions or you want any more detail, please feel free to leave me a comment on what you would exactly like to see on this, but that's the basic rundown of it, and I'll try to post pictures throughout the video of what I'm talking about with the C-channel is and stuff, but uh, yeah, it's just a custom-made rail system that I made with a Harbor Freight welder, and it's very strong, but these lights are going away. I guess this is a perfect segue into what's happening next. Um, LEDs are going away, as well as the rail system. Um, and I will be hanging a eight bulb ATI sun power fixture over the tank. It's actually on its way right now. I was checking the tracking. It should be here by three o'clock and it is right now 1.30. I'm getting excited. Uh, but the tank's gonna be going all T5. Um, I'll, I'll explain why in the video when I unveil it and stuff. So anyways, uh, that's the light hanger and lighting system of this tank currently. Um, like I said, I got a ton of requests on how I did this. So that's how it's done, guys. We'll see you on the next one. Later.